Oh, hey guys, it's Jill Pickup from so much monsters.com and we're going to go into our next little step here, which is going to be unwrapping our model. So first thing we're going to want to do is kind of identify where our model is going to be broken up into UV seams. And what this is, is basically UV coordinate is how you assign a texture to your 3D mesh. So once we break the UV, like the model up into these chunks, we'll assign places where the texture will be mapped to it and that's how we'll see it in game. So we'll identify the best places, so in this case around the edge of the blade and then around the same, basically fall in that same line cutting the sword in half uh, in the same way. Um, we'll break down the unwrap elements, so once we split it in half like that we'll unwrap them and let them kind of unfold themselves. And then finally we'll just play a, a horrible mind-blowing game of Tetris where we try and get the best pixel density out of these, these models. So let's get into it. It's going to be a pretty easy unwrap. We're just going to basically planar map the whole thing. Um, and that will get everything kind of laid out respectably for the moment. Turn off a planar mode. One. I'm just going to relax everything separately. Since right now it's just halves, it's pretty easy. I don't have to deal with uh, making selections or anything. Ooh, we have some issues here. Let this untwist itself for a second. Get it, get it. You can do it. Let's do one at a time. And then we'll change the face mode. That should stop the spinning. So you can see now, to lay this out in a square, it's going to be kind of annoying with that blade being one whole piece. So I'm going to actually take it and set it up vertically, but I'm just going to split off the other half of it, the top half of it. So we'll just have those side by side. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about the seams. We're going to render in all of our detail. If you were doing some nonsense where you are using crazy bump or something to do uh, your normals, which I discourage for the most part, the quality is very, very different. Um, You can use Crazy Bump for surface detail, but I would encourage you to try and get as much data you can from a high-res model. That will give you the best quality normal map in the end, and in so doing, give you the best quality light in the end. So I'm just taking this and splitting it up. This is a pretty easy unwrap because, like I said, they're you know the parts are all split up like that. Um, we can separate it out a little bit more once we get it broken down a little bit. So this is what, that's the, the base, is that the base? No, that's the, the handguard. Okay, so the handguard, um, I think I want to split off the top. So I'll just grab, zoom in and find it. Let's just cut out this whole segment here. Grab one and then tell it to grab the loop selection. Apparently I don't have a loop selection, so I will go to the point to point selection tool. And I will click, 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 click. And now in here I'll just break. I'll break that edge. So now I have this part, this element is separated out. I can relax that by itself, and then I can relax this individually. Let's see, we'll get a more relaxed result on this and get a little bit better distribution of our distortion. Can take a peek at it real quick just to see what it looks like. Kind of crazy pants at the moment.
Okay, rearrange these a little bit, and then we should be pretty good. Um, I think I'll break the handle off to at the base of the handle down here. So once again, edge mode, point to point selection. You can do point to point seams, but it really only matters if you're using a pelt map, and we don't really need to use a pelt map since we have our model broken down so much. So I'll just break and then relax. Start, relax, start, relax. That should be okay. I don't intend to make any straight lines. That's the one big consideration you want to take when you make uh, your unwrap happen is you want to think about how much of this model needs to be, need to have like really straight lines. So if you're going to be doing um, a lot of, one sec here, ah, let's manually untangle that real quick. Occasionally you'll get things knotted up like this and it is usually because there are it's just a little bit too difficult for it to unwrap it, to like relax this all together. Um, so if you do a little bit of untangling yourself and then go back and try that face, uh, relax again, it should work. And if it does not, your best bet is to go into the yeah, wait. face mode, start relax. Okay, it's still doing it. Let's, uh, we'll collapse in our, our unwrap. And then I'm gonna go over to the utility panel and say reset X form, reset selected, collapse that. And then what I'm gonna do is just double check and make sure there's no extra verts. Cause sometimes if you have verts piled up, you will get some grief when it comes to, looks like I had a few. See how that goes now. They'll pile up and when they're piled up, that means it's gonna be an N-gon or a, a, a polygon that's got more than four sides. Um, and that will give you a little bit of mess. Like you'll see some things in here that'll probably be, let's see if this, these might actually just be endgons anyway. Let's investigate. So that's four sides. No, this should be good. This one should be able to relax out now that I've done the, uh, done my due diligence on cleaning it up. Okay, and then face. All right, we can tweak that manually. Oh, actually, you know what? That looks like it's actually correct already. Or close, fine, whatever. So like I said, if you were gonna draw straight lines across a model, say you were gonna do a bunch of ribbing or something across the, the, the handle, um, having a straight line so that when you draw in Photoshop, you draw a single pixel line across or you know multiple pixels, but straight lines are infinitely better quality if they are straight up or down. Uh, when you when you actually add a angle to it, if you try to draw straight lines across this, then you'll have, since pixels are square, you'll have kind of a stepping stone, like a, a ladder, or sorry, a, um, stairs rather than um, straight lines. All right, we know we're gonna have this unwrapped fully, so we want to actually accommodate that space. Let's move some things around. Let's move this up to the top first, and we will assume that it will double up to right here, so I won't use that space. Um, this little triangle here can probably get wedged over by... The triangle can get what You guys see what I did there? Funny. I'm a funny man. All right, put this in here. We don't want to get it too close to the edge or too close to other parts. We want to have a little space for our model to uh, MIP and, uh, MIP map. That is, that's what you refer to kind of an LOD for textures. Um, let's see if there's anything we can do up here. I can see that actually relaxed itself out. Well, that's better. Let's just give this whole thing a relax. Oh, shoot. That's some weird transform on it, I guess. All right, well, I guess we'll give this another shot then. <laughs> Changes things a little bit. Um, if we can fit, let's turn on our options. References. 
uh, we'll put our grid size to 0.5, oops, 0.5, which means now I'll have, hmm, did I do snap? Not, hmm, what, silly, oh, show grid. So now we'll be able to see where our halfway point is, and that means that we will actually be able to decide if we can do a rectangular unwrap. So I guess we just need to commit to the, uh, the rectangular portion, so let's just play that Tetris game. Um, there's not a whole lot of rocket science here, it's just a matter of finding the best configuration of things. Uh, you want to keep things pretty pretty uh, consistent with pixel density, meaning that when you put a checkerboard, like the simplest way to check is putting the checkerboard on and seeing if the checkerboards are relatively similar in size. Um, if you give one part more than another, uh, you'll see the fidelity change, and actually it will will actually affect um, quality just in, in how you observe it. So try and keep them relatively equally packed and as close as you can to the same size. This is probably the most annoying part of making a character, I'm going to say. I'm just trying to get the basic center line properly centered. Just going to scale everything down and make sure it's at the zero position. Right click. Oh, meant to be on Y. So now when I do symmetry, I say on the Y axis and I flip it. We'll turn down the weld threshold pretty low. Just double check that it doesn't break anything. Seems pretty good. Collapse it in. Unwrap. We'll open the UV editor. And I've kind of decided that this whole piece, the second half here, is going to get moved over and welded. And I'm going to actually scale it down slightly to Relax this. Let the edge angles go. Edge angles go crazy, and then we'll do face for a minute, and then we'll straighten her out. And now, like we said, we set it up before to have our model to be in the 50% range. And that was so that we could basically find out if it was going to be rectangular or not, or if it could be, and now it can. So now what we need to do is basically just scale this. Um, we can do uh, I guess we can probably just yank it over. Now, if you want to see what this was going to look like display properly, we can go into preferences and we can say instead of 256 by 256, we can say 256 by 512, and now it will show us the squared up rectangular UV. So now we'll just do a 256 by 512 or 512 by 1024 for our render, and we should be straight. So the last thing we need to do before we go off into rendering in the next video is we need to make sure that we take this model and take anything that is not actually, um, or that's actually being mirrored. So I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to deselect the element up here. This is the only piece in the model that's not mirrored because of the wrap, remember. The rest of it we're going to do symmetrical. So then we need to find, so I unwrapped the front side of it. So let's go from the top view, making sure we turn off ignore back facing. We're just going to drag select all of the, oops, the front of the model. and double check and see if when we pull this, nothing comes with it. Perfect. And we're just going to offset this one unit on the U, which means it's going to set our UVs over here. One, oops. We need to tell it to absolute and relative type in to change that to um, 
transform the whole thing. We hit one now, type in one and hit enter. You see it's just offset at one UV unit, which will let us then render um, a mirrored model without rendering in a broken seam. So there you have it. That's the low poly model with UVs ready to go into our render stage. This has been Joe Pickup from so much monsters.com. Brrr.